Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to do a, an example of a simple checkpoint system. So I will get into the example I have here in my current project. The player jumps in the treasure chest, the player is teleported to the next mini level. If the player dies on that mini level, he is respawned at the start of that level. So again, he jumps into this chest, teleport to the next one, dies, spawns at that one. So yeah, let's get straight in. Um, I'm going to close this down because obviously we want. I want to be able to show you from the start. And I'll open my other one, which has no trigger boxes or no treasure chests. I won't be using treasure chests in this example. I'll just be uh, yeah, showing you, just showing you how to do it really. So we first want to set up the teleportation from level to level. So let's create some trigger boxes. So we type in box trigger, drag in a box trigger, and we can just name this something else. We'll call it TB Tele 1. So trigger box teleport 1. Uh, and then we can duplicate this, alt and drag. Move this over to the end of this mini level. Let me just make this screen a little bigger. And that should do it there. And then drag, alt and drag again. Okay, that should be enough. We next want to create some. I don't know why they're there. We next want to create some empty actors. So we go up to the top left, type in empty actor. Drag the empty actor in. Let's shrink the billboarder scale a little bit. And we want to put one of these at the start of each level. And I'll explain why just in a second. Start of that level. So each time the player passes into the trigger box, he will teleport to this area here. And once the goes through this trigger box, he will teleport here. And why why I'm using these empty actors is because each time the player teleports, I want to be able to easily get the location of where this is. This is so that I can adjust the player start actor. So this, in other words, when the player dies, the player respawns at player start, but we obviously don't want the player start to be at the start of the very first level. We want to be able to move it to here and so on so that's what we'll do in the blueprint so now that we've got the first three mini level starts we can go into the uh, blueprint open level blueprint and let's drag in TB Tele 1 so this is let's not drag that in we don't want to do that sorry we want to highlight it and we want to right click add event for TB Tele 1 collision add on event begin overlap and we want to cast to our character so cast BP so I've got my blueprint for my characters called BP char connect this up we then want the player to teleport so drag off type in teleport and the target is obviously the character because that's who we want to move. Um, the destiny location is that's the first level. This is the second level, so you obviously want him to go here. So, so we highlight that actor. We drag in a reference. We come off here and we type in get actor location. And obviously we want to do that for the next ones too. So we come to the end of the second mini level. We highlight the trigger box. And we right click. Add event. Collision. Begin overlap. And we copy and paste this. To make it easy and quick. Connect these up. 
and obviously this time we don't want to use the same empty actor as we did last time because we want to teleport to a new level which is this one which I didn't name unfortunately but it's called actor 2 and we want to ha uh, drag that in so right now the player should just teleport to the next levels so it goes here, there we go, second mini level Then we go third main level, okay. So after that we want to change the position of the player start actor. So we need to get a reference to the player start, which is here. Drag that in. And again we want to teleport this because we want it to move. So Teleport. And we want this location to be the same place as the start of the new level. Because every time the player dies, we want the player start to get teleported to the, the start of the next level. So destination for player start will be the same as the actor. Let's drag that there. And we can do the same thing here. We can copy paste the teleport. Um, target is player start, still. Destination location is this actor, because that's the empty actor that's at the start of um, the, third, the third mini level. So we compile. Now what we need to do next is set up the trigger boxes for when the player dies. So basically in this in this setup, the only way the player can die at the moment is if he falls into the water. And right now, if he does that, nothing happens. We want him obviously to respawn at the start of the level they are on. So let's create more trigger boxes. Let's lower that a little bit. We want to move it so the player will preferably land in it if he falls down, otherwise he's going to be falling down forever. And let's just call this TB Death 1. What a pleasant name. Um, and it's always hard to highlight it once you put it over something else. TB Death 1. Okay, and then we duplicate that by alt and dragging. Resize it again. We want to make sure it's big enough. That's what she said. Um, now, the final one, for now anyway. That should be fine. Okay, so we want to come back into our level blueprint. And again, we're going to do similar, similar things with the, with these uh, trigger boxes. So, def one, highlight it, add event, collision, overlap, and we want to say if the player hits this trigger box, we want to respawn in, in the appropriate place, which is the current level they should be on. So. So we want to respawn the player at wherever player start is. So teleport, just copy and paste, not oh, sorry, copy and paste these two, the teleport and the player start. Drag this together, unclick that. We want the the location, the get actor location for the player start. Target, there we go. And obviously we want the player to get teleported so we can drag target to as BP char. 
So if we play this and the player falls off the first level, he should be respawned. Yeah, there we go. If he falls off now, nothing will happen because we haven't done that yet. So let's just copy and paste this whole one. Uh, we want to change the death trigger box to TB Def 2. Right click, add event, collision, begin act overlap. Again, do the same thing. So if the player. Let's just make sure the first level still works. Yep. Goes to the second level. Player falls down, lands, respawns at the beginning of the second mini level. Now I could do that for the third mini level and the fourth mini level, but I uh, I think you get the point. Um, so there are there are a few disadvantages and advantages of this system. The, the main advantage is that it is very simple and it's easy to update. As you can see, you add more levels to your game. You can just pretty much do this over and over again. The main disadvantage is that the level isn't reloaded. And what I mean by that is, say for example you have a matinee and on your first playthrough the matinee plays and the the matinee finishes. So if you've got like, I don't know, something simple like a block that's moving from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, at the end of the matinee if the block stays on the right hand screen, at the hand of the screen, then dying would mean that that block is stayed at the end of that matinee so it's not in the place you'd want it to be which can cause problems like you know moving platforms to help a player get from one side of a platform to another so I can show you one way around that um, over here these are some other obviously because it's my project I've already got some uh, some set up I have a matinee um, I'll show you in, in game. So the player starts, gets to this level, that's like the fourth mini level. And once he starts moving, this matinee plays, and he's got to avoid the spikes by con not letting go of the sprint button. And I'm rubbish, clearly. <laughs> I'll try that again. The player's got to get to the end of the level without letting go of sprint because otherwise he's going to die. But what happened if he if he died? And I, you know, I did not think about the matinee. Then, obviously, if I died, the spikes wouldn't be at the start of the level, and the, yeah, the it would screw us up. So, but if I if I start again, um, I can show you in the blueprint how to fix that with a matinee. So, all you'd have to do is each time the player is di has died, restart the matinee, pretty much. So here, I've got stop, and then I've dragged off the actual matinee actor, and you set the position to zero, and yeah, jump ticked. Now when I originally did this, I had a problem of making the player start movable. So in other words, you know, if you've made an if you've made a matinee before with a movement track, you have to make sure the the actor is movable in order to be able to use it uh, within that movement track. So I couldn't do that at first because I was teleporting this. Um, I was teleporting. I was attempting to teleport the player start actor, but it wasn't letting me because it's saying it wasn't movable. And I searched far and wide online, and I couldn't find anywhere how to make the player start movable. So the cheeky way I got round it was, is I went to add matinee and I made a new empty group blah blah it doesn't matter what it's called I added a movement track and then I highlighted the player start and I right clicked on the group and said add selected actors and then what that did is it automatically made the player start actor movable which obviously it didn't show it there because I've already done that but that is how I got around it and it worked for me
Unreal Engine might have changed since then with the patches and you might actually be able to make it movable easily or you might have been able to do it easily in the past but I couldn't find out how to so yeah so if you get any troubles with the, the player start actor that is um, how I how I fixed it so it could be moved and teleported so yeah um, I hope this was helpful I'm sorry it's a bit the tutorial is a bit longer than usual um, I hope I explained it well enough if not you know, tell me in the comments and I'll try my best next time. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and I uh, I hope to see you in the next one. See you now.